Collaring elephants is an important tool in understanding their behavior, but it's no easy task. Immobilizing such large creatures is a tricky process, requiring a powerful cocktail of potentially lethal drugs, a dedicated team of professionals, and a whole lot of manpower. Elephants Alive, based near South Africa's Kruger National Park, is a conservation organization working to ensure the survival of elephants and their habitat. The most effective way to study the movements of these giants is to fit them with satellite tracking collars. So we've collared 65 elephants since 1998, um, which is quite a lot in about 110 collaring operations over time. But sophisticated telemetry technology comes at a price, with collaring operations costing around $5,000 per elephant. The Elephant Ignite expedition team sponsored a collar for one such operation, and they're hoping it will help solve a mystery. Elephants are breaking through the fences of a mine to reach what appears to be a totally desolate area, and no one is sure why. We collared three elephants in a very interesting area called Palaborwa Copper, which is actually a mining site. And elephants are being attracted to that area. We think it could be micronutrients. In being attracted to an area that's, that's busy with people all the time, there's a potential for human-elephant conflict. So we need to understand how those elephants move to and from this mining area, and that's why we collared them. The Elephant Ignite expedition team had a rare opportunity to join elephants alive on this collaring operation. At the crack of dawn, they head out to the location. So we're very excited to be with Michelle Hemi from Elephants Alive. The Elephant Ignite expedition has actually paid for one of the collars, so we're very excited to be part of this initiative. Fitting a five-ton elephant with a collar involves some serious logistics. The animal must be immobilized, and for that you need a specialized wildlife vet. When we collar elephants, we call in absolute experts in the field, and there can be no better veterinarian than Dr. Quibus Rott. Dr. Rott has successfully darted over 2,000 elephants. Always fun to work with elephants, always, and uh, a privilege. So, um, you know, we just hope it all goes well. A powerful cocktail of drugs will be used to tranquilize the elephants, and it's potentially lethal to humans. Everything is prepped, and it's time for the operation to begin. The three elephants to be collared will be darted by air. The vet hops into the chopper, and the ground team heads into the reserve bordering the mine. The first elephant immobilized is a cow. Michelle and her team rush to the animal's side while the Elephant Ignite crew hang back, anxiously awaiting the go-ahead. Where's the collar? The elephant is now properly sedated, and it's safe to approach. A small twig is placed in the elephant's trunk to help him breathe. There's that little blue bag. <laughs> While the collar is fitted, blood and hair samples are taken and the animal is measured. We collect blood samples for DNA, we collect tail hair samples because that's a, that's a timeline of short-term dietary changes and we use carbon isotope analysis to get those results. The Elephant Ignite team, eager to get involved, works to assist the vet and the researchers with their measurements. With the collar secured, it's time to administer the antidote but the female has fallen in an awkward position and it's going to be difficult for her to get up. She needs to be tipped and the team needs all the manpower they can get. Carla Hazer, expedition leader, gives the antidote. It'll take just a few minutes for the elephant to come round, so the team must move quickly and clear the area. After a few wobbly steps, the female lumbers into the thicket, seemingly unaware of her flashy new accessory. We wouldn't have collared these elephants if Elephant Ignite hadn't sponsored a collar. So we're incredibly grateful um, that they've created this opportunity. And we've actually decided to, to name the cow that we call it Ignite. 
It's now time to collar the next elephant, a magnificent bull. These huge animals require huge collars. The device weighs almost 30 pounds and it's around 13 feet in length. So maneuvering it into place takes some skill. So you've got to try and thread the collar between the ear and the body. So we've got a special stick which looks a bit like a shepherd's stick that's got a wire through it. We loop the wire through the holes in the collar bouting and then we thread it through below the neck of the elephant. Then we've got a, a, a lead counterweight which we have to bolt onto both sides of the belt which ensures that the satellite components are always facing skyward. And obviously when there's bolts and sharp metal, metal parts involved, we've also got to cut off the ends of the bolt and file them down nicely so that there's no disturbance to the animal in terms of collar friction. Working with wild animals in an unpredictable environment is risky. A curious elephant approaches the collaring team and tensions run high. Right. All the people move on this side of the elephant, please. Luckily, the experienced team from Elephants Alive knows exactly how to handle the situation, and eventually the animal moves off. Each EIE crew member is given an opportunity to perform one of the many vital data collecting procedures involved in the collaring operation. And for them, it's an amazing and humbling experience to be so close to such incredible creatures. Once the collar is secured and the antidote administered, the elephant gets to its feet and moves off. The bulls are more inclined to cause friction with humans. Bulls also move relative to cows, so it's important to get uh, both sexes. We chose particular bulls which we thought might be moving into, into the mining area or even into Palaborua town so that we could understand their movements relative to the human landscape. The last collaring of the day involves another bull. The drugs take effect and the elephant goes down. By now the crew knows the drill. They get stuck in taking measurements. After each coloring is complete, an antibiotic is administered into the dart wound of the sedated elephant. When you go to a doctor and he's going to give you an injection, he obviously cleans the skin where the needle goes through. Well, in the wildlife, we can't do that. So the dart has now taken in some dirt into the, into the animal. So when we remove the dart, we will be uh, putting some antibiotics in there to prevent an abscess from, from forming and uh, to uh, just make sure that the dirt and everything that gets in doesn't start an infection. The collaring procedures are over for the day and the chopper takes off while Yolundi administers the last antidote. The collaring operation takes less than 30 minutes per animal. It's a testament to the efficiency of this professional team and their five-ton patients. It was fantastic having the Elephant Ignite expedition participating in the collaring operation. It's so inspiring to see how people are overawed when you've got the privilege of actually touching an elephant or helping with a measurement or collecting real data from a real living being that's lying there snoring on the ground. It's just the most incredibly humbling experience and I'm so grateful to be here and it was a really overwhelming and almost surreal experience. It was just the most incredible, incredible, I have no words actually, how to describe how we felt. Thanks to the team from the Elephant Ignite Expedition, there is now a chance of not only solving the mystery at this South African mine, but of collecting new, vital data on these incredible animals. Stay tuned for more epic adventures from the Elephant Ignite Expedition as the passionate team of all-female explorers continues their 100-day journey through 10 African countries. <laughs>